Welcome to Smodcast. I'm Kevin Smith. Okay, I can count on one hand the amount of these that I've done uh, in my office not smoking weed. Probably two, maybe three. It's very rarely. Every once in a while you run across somebody who's like, I'm living sober, and you respect that. Um, Or you come across, I mean, honestly, that was it. Um, Maybe once when I had my kid on the podcast, when Harley was little, I, I think I didn't smoke. I ain't smoking today because our guest is young, but comes from a land of weed even before the whole damn nation went legal and stuff like that. And we are in a legal we- uh, land of California and stuff, but he's still technically what they would call a kid. Now, when you say kid, I challenge you to hold up any childhood to the childhood our guest has had over the last few years man and he's handled it incredibly well we've crossed paths a few times i was lucky enough to present him with the word once uh, i saw him in san diego and talked to him as well and very rarely do you meet people in this business who are also level-headed and got good heads good hearts and stuff particularly when they get them young in this business kids and you, you see story after story about what happens to kids jump in this business too young this kid's got a good head and a good heart man um and way talented and taking every job every teenage actor in in the business probably wants right now he is absolutely everywhere he's one of these kids you're gonna watch the whole if you're lucky enough but you'll probably die before it ends you're gonna get to watch the whole expanse of this kid's career you're gonna be like i remember when dot 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 you'll be watching this kid step up pick up tin one day on a stage and stuff like that he'll probably say nice things best parents because he's a damn good kid and a damn talented kid man the only kind of kid that the great land of the true north ever produces man um he has been popped probably a number of times funko wise oh yeah gotta be right a few times yeah um he has been he is insanely world famous they know him everywhere because he is part of a, a, a program that became a cultural phenomenon and then Went on to be in a movie that became a cultural phenomenon. Um, he's got a, then he's got stuff coming out this year. Is it an Amblin flick? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the, yeah, an Amblin flick called, There's, um, Turning. The Turning. Yeah. There's an Amblin flick coming out. There's going to be another season of yeah. Stranger yeah. Things. Season four has been kicked off. And later this year, Ghostbusters yes. happens yeah. in the midst of all this. Yeah. This fucking slacker underachiever kid also has a band. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Calpurnia that right. he tours with and performs with and probably mm-hmm. will be doing something this year. Yeah, I will yeah, we that venture has since been You've done. altered into something I've, else. I've You've alter- joined I've another altered, band. Yeah, altered into a smaller We're gonna find thing. out. Yeah, all we're gonna about yeah, oh yeah. yeah as yeah. we sit here and chit chat yeah. with the ever busy, mm-hmm. um, ever good hearted, ever talented, and um we're we're only sitting here because he's got like a minute in a jam packed schedule, and he was like, "Oh, I want to do a podcast with Kevin Smith. I own a podcast. What a great kid, man! There are many people in this life who are hard, but there aren't many that are Finn Wolfhard. Welcome. Uh, oh man, that was a very nice. That's a very nice opening. How have you been? Besides busy, um, I've been good. I've been fu- I've been good. I've been finishing up my last year of high school in Vancouver. So, did you um, actually? Do you still? Boots on the ground, go to Esquela? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Es- yes, Esquela. The whole time? Yeah. Ever since Even Stranger? When does that shit shoot? That's, sh- uh, that's, y- last year was all summer, so I didn't really so miss, you don't any, miss school. any school. Uh, but before that, it was, you know, like October to, you know, it's a long shoot. It's like six months, so. So how much school of your, like, high school career did you miss? <laughs> have I been, have I been to in Into total? an actual school. Yeah, well, my friend told me, came up to me the other day and was like, this might be the longest I've seen you at school before. And I'm like, really? She's, she, yeah, it's more than like 30 days at least. <laughs> and I was like, well, it feels good. But um, no, yeah, I've been going to school my my entire, I mean, I've, I was homeschooled one year in seventh grade, which right. was like great and also like kind of like hell um, because I kind of had a year just to do nothing. In seventh grade, I had a year just to do nothing. Were you acting at this point? Yeah, I was considering quitting. Um, considering quitting acting? Yeah, because, so, I had, when I was, like, eight years old, I had a long, long-run dream. Like, for some reason, I just, I've always been, like, I just always have a plan. Right. And my plan, I started making, mo- like, little movies with my friend Simon. and At age eight? Uh, a little young, like, 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 mm, 
Yeah, like seven or eight. Predicated on what? Who puts a camera in your hands? Why does that happen? That hap- Well, so is that just your generation? Because you all I, have iPads. Well, that's the crap? thing is like you know, it, I remember hearing like, oh, there's a camera on your what uh, iPod or whatever iPod Touch, and that's like an incredible thing to put in a kid's hands because now it's like anyone could be a filmmaker. I mean, anyone you know the people that are actually doing films like there's a reason why they are but you know sean baker did that whole movie tangerine which is on an iphone on an iphone with which went into theaters which went into theaters and then also like but he shot it on like it wasn't just like the iphone he had like some cool lenses you know he had the extra money but like the point is you could definitely do that and um you know my friend was i i had no idea how to edit that was the thing i had no i couldn't again wrap my how old are you i was like eight at the time well like why would you know how to edit well, Is, well that's do the kids thing. know how to edit at age eight now? No, i mean because i take no. a great amount of pride in knowing how to edit well th- like, that's well that's the other thing is you edited your first films yeah, yeah, yeah. and still do you still i mean yeah, you said oh, yeah. it yeah you still that's the only way i can try you like you've worked with a lot of directors now and i'm sure you've sure. seen they come with like a plan and yeah, stuff course. like that my or some of them like we're gonna shoot a package of coverage yeah um i kind of go in literally shoot only the pieces I know I'm yeah. going to cut together because I'm not an editor so much as an assembler, probably. Well, R- Jason Reitman, who I know has been on the podcast, yes. Reitman, he has the entire movie planned and is cut in his head before he goes in. Like he, is he his own cutter as well? He No, he's not his own cutter, but he, I mean, he has this thing where he, like, pages and pages, like, of, of each kind of big scene that he has right. and he'll go in with second team with, uh, with the stand-ins to the location before we start shooting and kind of take pictures of, you know, medium shot, back from behind so um that's also a really cool thing to but uh, yeah that was the i wanted to make i was such a like little i don't know i was i was such an i wasn't entitled i was already kind of like a dick filmmaker at like six (laughs) like eight years old like i was like why won't they give like a 10 year old a million dollars to make a movie like that was my thinking behind it which kind of fucking progressive parents do you <laughs> yeah. come from, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all pretty ridiculous. Sudden, and entitled they, as well. well. Why won't they why give won't a child they, millions of well, dollars? Well, they weren't. They didn't. So, but they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Just <laughs> go to school and go to church. But um, And church. And ch- what is well, church? What faith? Um, Well, I get, well, because I grew up in uh, going to a Catholic school. Catholic Did you school. go to Catholic school? And I still go to Catholic school. Cause I, Currently, I just, you're in a Catholic yeah, school? Yeah, it's just a great like reality check. I, I was raised Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to make excuses. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, uh, do you have to wear a uniform? Yeah, totally. Let's let's go. This is gonna, normally when we do this show, we always kind of it's kind of more or less this is your life where you have sure. a guest and you kind of go back to the beginning. But and for you, that's going to take like, like this a is the red yeah, hot yeah, yeah yeah yeah. We were just talking a second ago. Finn was just like, "How long you lived here?" I'm like, "Well, in February it's going to be 18 years. When are you going to be 18?" In uh, I just turned 17, so in a year I'll be 18. <laughs> so I've been in this house longer than you've yeah. been on this earth. Yeah. Um, but in that short amount of time, and in an even shorter window of that, sure. Time, You've exploded onto the pop culture landscape. Let's figure out how that on, happened. On accident. To that's, me, that's, that's how I usually, feel. Well, on, it can't be It can't be an accident if you're sitting there going, I'm going to shoot movies right, at right, AJ. Right, right. Sure, like, sure. You've got dreams, kid. Sure. Well, I, well, you know, and that's also, you know, I wasn't like, this was, I wasn't complaining of going out to people right. and complaining <laughs> no, why give no, me you, money. But in my head, I was like, you had the artist You know, mentality. people have, I was like, I, I feel like I have some cool ideas. Like, I feel like, you know, um, but... Just then enough, again, I don't you know, think it, I did, but it's a, it's enough. What is it? I, it's it's uh, there's a, a a what did I used to call it? A a moderate amount? No. Uh, oh, damn. There's Co- it's, like confidence. Yeah, and it's a little beyond a a, a, re- a reasonable amount of unreasonability. Sure. Because unreasonable, it's unreasonable to be like, it's literally unreasonable mm-hmm. for a kid to be like, why won't they give kids ten million? Bucks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what shapes like the future that's what shapes art Mm -hmm. you just need a reasonable amount of unreasonability unreasonable amount of unreasonability is like i'm gonna jump off the roof with no jetpack and fly sure sure reasonable amount is like i'm gonna make some art yeah like even at a young age Mm -hmm. and if you're feeling that like from it from age eight for Mm -hmm. heaven's sakes like that's how people go like how do people get successful at a young age there it is even at eight you were like i think I feel the calling. The yeah, I feel like I've always. Calling. I think I feel like I've always had a drive. Mm. And the minute I found, you know, my I met another kid in in fifth grade who knew how to edit on an, like a very basic, like one an earlier version of like iMovie, which is the built-in thing on Mac. Right. And I remember him putting uh, 
titles on the screen t- on a screen and it blew my mind you were and like it, oh my god but it was like comic sans it was like the worst you know <laughs> obvious but it was, um, start it was you, obviously and i at I, least it, was, it wasn't that avatar font for him <laughs> yeah yeah what's it called uh, <laughs> uh, that uh whole pa- SNL yeah yeah, yeah it's um papyrus papyrus <laughs> classic papyrus yes. um but yeah i mean i've always but yeah i guess this that whole pop culture thing was completely out of left field where the all right when do you decide i like acting or does somebody go like, "Hey, you look like you should be in shit"? No, I no, I I feel like it would have been different if I was like discovered, right? You know, because like sometimes you hear like, "Oh, so and so was discovered at the mall, and totally. that's how we got." And it's like, I feel like if someone came up to me at like nine years old and they were like, "You'd be like, help, please." Yeah, I, I would have been like, <laughs> "What? No, um, yeah, totally, yeah." Someone's talking stranger danger. You grew up in Vancouver, mm-hmm. where in, in the van? Uh, like Kits area, Kitsish area, yeah, kind of Kitsilano area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's for those who've never been. British Columbia is a jewel of the West Coast. It's where I went to film school. It's where I go up to do like CW shows, like Super, super Girl, stuff. Yeah. Like, it, it's a, a beautiful place. You it's ever amazing. Been to Rio go- Theater. When oh, you of there course. Yeah, I go there all the time. You seem like I, a Rio kid. Oh uh, yeah, I just um. Uh, a few months ago, I saw Akira there, the big screen. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So I'm, I mean, I, it's great going back there. The Pacific Northwest is, in general, also is just great. Mm. Seattle, all that. It's stuff. It's a good place to be from too. Yeah, like it, it gave you some roots, gave you some earth. What do mom and dad do? Well, so my mom was like an, a visual artist for a long time. Ah, and now we're starting to see yeah, the DNA. Yeah. So and already you got a reasonable, uh, unreasonable, reasonably unreasonable. Unreasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my my dad, um. He does like a lot of stuff for Aboriginal people in BC and uh, like land claims. I think I've seen you do like like charity. Yeah, I've, like, I've done a lot. Yeah, for First Nation schools stuff. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so he did that. But in the uh, I would say early early nineties, he started writing screenplays um, and uh, figured out that that's really what you know he he loved to do. That's the calling. And uh, so he went to L.A. and got an agent at Gersh and everything and did it for a while. And then he was like, well, this isn't going to make me any money. And then went home and became kind of like a lawyer and but still kept writing. Right. right, um, right. He's still, so I still mean, even now he's writing. Now still. another reasonably unreasonable right. parent in the mix right. as well. So you come from two dreamers at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Naturally, they got a dreamer kid who's like, yeah, I think I would like to yeah. do this stuff. And they're like, OK, um, who tells who do you tell them or do they tell you you're good at this? You should. Or do you go? Um, I would like to. I t- I told them and then they were like, well, if that's what you want to do, then you should do it, um, which is hard. I feel like for any parent to just be like, yeah, sure. Like at a young age. And also for the whole. T- I mean, I, st- you know, I've got five months left of of, of uh, high school and I still, you know, for two parents to sit there and be like, you don't have to go to college is mm. a hard, also a really hard thing to, mm. uh, to I did that grasp. for my kid. I'll be honest though. Yeah. I was just like, the moment my kid was like, I don't think I want to go to college. I want to act. I was like, you know what? Like you go to college to figure out what you want to do exactly. in life. If you know what you want to do, that's great. My wife was like, oh no, yeah, yeah, go yeah, on yeah. to school. And I'm like, it's the exact same thing with my parents. My dad's like, no, you know what you're going to do, man. Like not a lot of, a bunch of money, spending a bunch of money doesn't. And my mom's like, well, what if he wants to do something else? So that's what I, that's what I told her inside. I was like, we are going to save so, so much, much money. money. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be incredible. It's going to be so good. We're going to put additions on yeah, the house because this that, kid is done with school. Yeah. That hit is not going to be, uh, <laughs> it's not going to be very much, large. Yeah, as much. All right. So what, where and why in Vancouver does acting come into the equation if you're running right. around with cameras and stuff and trying to make little sure. movies? Um, well, I kind of figured out my my dad and I would talk a lot about it, and I would I would be like, you know, I heard about like NYU, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's where filmmakers are like, yeah, I know, right? I was you planning them advanced kids, man. Well, I was like looking so I, well because I would read interviews and watch interviews with directors, and I'm like, man, all these directors go to film school, like that's how Tish they being one of the best and then i we both and then my dad was like well a lot of actors start as actors and then they go into directing like i know and i was on like i would do like improv class because my so a lot of it also comes from my brother my brother's five years older than me and was like on the improv team and like so he was acting as well so yes and he's so a voice there's actor a third there's a third bo- unreasonable a, a, yeah, yeah. reasonable amount yes. of unreasonable in the house yeah and so my brother was really like you know he also He's the one who also showed me clerks, clerks and all that stuff. So, He's a, and also a bad influence. Brother. Also a bad influence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
so a lot of it I kind of like kind of came from everyone in my family and then we kind of figured out oh like maybe if I wanted to be a director maybe you should try being on a set and learning firsthand what's going on on, on set so mm. um I we went on um like cast there's like open casting calls on the line mm. there's like cra- even Craigslist um which is what you so shady right which is what you hear you know yeah it's like come like, be in my movie yeah you come know, be in my movie actor, child dead, yeah 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 <laughs> Slain. 11 year old boy Alano. needed kills a lot yeah, yeah yeah um, um so wait somebody somebody said hey come audition for something i saw a an ad for a local vancouver band who needed a kid for a music video and oh, we went awesome. up to, to west vancouver are and, you into music at this point uh, not as much. I mean, like, have you learned to play a guitar? N- no, I know how to play bass at this time. Okay. I was playing bass at that just, point yeah. when they were like, "Come be in this music video." Yeah, yeah. And my how old my bass, I um, I I started playing bass when I in 2010, so I was like eight. <laughs> um, but it when was, are you going to run for not, prime minister? Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on a bell curve that's not, way ahead of everybody else. I don't want to sound like oh, I had to play bass. I, no, I, you I, sound honestly. You I sound really like just, every creative person I ever I met. Love, it starts early. Sure, I just loved it. I loved doing it, and it gave me. And I, also, part of it was like I didn't want to play sports. Like my school is a huge jock school, Which and like, school, uh, well, is it an old school or a school? It's in my, school? My, my my old school. I go to this. I went to this tiny little, this tiny little private, not private, but like. Just little weird Catholic school, and like two hundred kids. Sports oriented, very like, and most schools kind of are. Like right. you know, obviously, like there's a bunch of art schools now. There's a lot more, but this one specifically, when I was um, younger, was very, very. I mean, and I played sports. You know, I played like football, and I liked it, but I wasn't as much into it, which kind of made me a harder kid to, you know, reach, reach. Right, right, right. Um. So I only had, you know, like one friend that entire time, which is totally also all you need. in the DNA of every creative yeah, person. Exactly. You have the first one, you know, um, a believer. You got a believer. Yeah. Um, and so I just started doing it more. And then like a big thing came in, which is like it was like it. And I knew about this it. is pre stranger things, pre stranger things, pre anything. And so I You've done nothing at this point. I've done no like professional job. high school or or grade school stuff. You've been yeah. on stage uh, as a kid. N- I let me improv like that's it. That's like, it. Yeah, yeah. Like no like really like no theater or anything. And so I got this like open another out, kind of open casting call like self tape for Vancouver for, area. For yeah, for Vancouver for it. For, and the director then was then was Carrie Fukunaga, right? Who you know just come did off of True Detective, True Detective, and, yeah, and was on fire. Yeah, so. I do the audition for that, and then I, you know, I do two tapes, and they're like, "Oh, they really like you. Come to L.A." And that was like mind blowing for me because I was like, "Oh my god, like that's amazing!" You know, they flew us out and for we a went, film school kid. Like I know we would. We well, yeah, and then we went to Warner Brothers, and that was like mind blowing to see like the water tower and right. like you know all that stuff. And then so I walk in, I see a bunch of other kids, and like it's a chemistry breed. So we're you know, and uh, chemistry like for people who don't. Under, I mean, I'm sure it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It's like they test your chemistry with other kids right. to make sure that you're okay together. How old are you at this point? Uh, t- 12. So do you have, would you say, at 12 years old, as you're sitting on the lot, Warner Brothers, seeing yeah. if maybe you're going to be an it? I was just having, like, I was so happy just to be there. Do you, is there any sense of like, oh my God, we're breathing rarefied air. This is nuts. Or at 12, are you like, this must happen to everybody? Uh... It was like a bit in between. I was like, I, this feels really uh, otherworldly, but I also like, this right, is also, I'm weirdly, yeah, it feels okay. Like it right, feels right. right. Um, God, it's amazing. People, yeah, successful Very people lucky. adapt to success at an early point. Some, yeah. It, just, it destroys some people. Oh, some people totally. like, miss the Early chance. on. Yeah. Um, well, right, I got, so, you know, I got a few more years to go. We'll see. Yeah, but, that's uh, true. You got bodies. We're <laughs> yeah. going to get to that yeah, list of yeah, bodies. Yeah. So you get, so do you get cast in that version of I it? I get cast in that version. So I do, I do. As the, Richie? As Richie, as the same character. And then we're like a week to shooting and we're like, that's, all, that's weird. They haven't booked our flight yet. Like, I wonder what's happening with that. And then just, we hear more and more like, oh, the director isn't in the place we're supposed to be filming. That's weird. It was like, you know, five days before we had to fly. It was originally going to be shooting Nyack, New York, upstate right, New York. Right. And then I just got a call from Carrie that was like, hey, I'm dropping out. I can't, we're not doing the movie anymore, but thanks so much. And like, you know, this isn't 
don't let it discourage you and all this stuff. And I was like fully crushed. I was like, well, if this is what movies is, then fuck this. So I stopped. I was like, I'm going to stop acting. But I mean, um, what an amazing I know, no, lesson total. to get No, that was amazing. 12. The first, like, well, the first like big job. Welcome to paradise, and It's kid. like, yeah, you're going to stay home now. So, <laughs> um, so then I was just so like, whatever, I'm, I don't really want to act anymore. If it's just like the, you know, you run it. Cause it's acting also, like I said, like I got it really early and I have a lot of actor friends that really gr- have to grind. Like mm-hmm. it's really, a lot of it is really humiliating going over and over rejection and over again. And rejection. rejection, rejection. And so I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that for a long Cause time. Cause you probably would have been like, you know what? Yeah. I'll just, well then I was like, you know, I can do with rejection, but I'd rather like be making it than like having to like just keep auditioning for new things. And like, so I was like, I still, I still wanted to be a filmmaker. Right. You'd be like, I, I ain't going to be on that side of the camera. Right. I'm be on this side of the right. camera where I'm in charge. Right. So, and, uh, so that went, and then I was, you know, we got this tape for something called Montauk, which at the time was Stranger Things, mm-hmm. which is the original title. And, uh, I really didn't want to do it. My dad was like, it's pretty cool. The sides are gray. Like you should just do it. And I was like, I don't want to do it. He was like, just do it. And so, and I was like, I'm sick. Like, I'm not going to do it. And he, uh, he said, well, we'll just do it from your bed. It's a self tape. Who cares? So we did it. I was sick in bed. And then was it for Mike for Mike. And then, uh, they were like, Oh, they really like it. Do it again. And I was like, Oh, that's weird. Okay. And then I did it again. And then they're like, they want to Skype with you. The Duffers want to Skype with you. I was like, okay. So they called me and they like heard that I liked movies. And so we just talked about movies and stuff. And then kind of at the end, they were like, um, we want to, we want you to come to LA. And I was like, in my back of my mind, I'm like, all right, this is happening again. Like, yeah, do, yeah, not like, get, fuck do, do not get, do not get, do not get, shame on, yeah. <laughs> do not get attached to this. So, um, but I was so happy. I was like, man, these guys are awesome. Like at the very least I could just get to hang out with them. And, and they're referencing cool movies. Cause they're, yeah, like eight, people at the time, stranger things. It's right. Like, and they were like, you know, they were referencing like, Oh, like we want some of it to kind of be like evil dead. And I just watched like evil dead. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's awesome. Have you guys seen the remake? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, I like it. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, and at then, that point they're probably like, aside from being talented, he's just going to be easy to have around. Like I was just, you could talk shop. With yeah, him. exactly. And they're, they felt like I, I could keep up with them. Yeah. Um, so I, I went and, uh, they, I think they're, a lot of the kids they were auditioning were very like uh they were gr- all great actors but they were very like kind of traditional um trained traditionally trained a lot of them had been like actors since they were like babies like disney kids like disney stuff. kids and like totally trained and like i guess w- what i was told was i was like different cuz like i had you know yeah, my, no system. my yeah and my teeth weren't straight and like you, you know looked like a human i looked being. like a human and like i i i just i would mess up my lines and i would like back up and i'd do it again and you know it's like so that to them was like a special thing because they're like oh this fe- feels like a real kid um so i did that i did two chemistry reads and then i didn't hear anything i didn't hear anything for like a whole summer and i was like well it's over like whatever it's pretty cool hopefully they're still doing it because it was a cool right cool thing and do you then, feel uh, that way is totally. that is that the Canadian no, still, and you're going boy i wish them well because i would have been like fuck i hope you. yeah i yeah. hope this show <laughs> fucking <laughs> dies thanks Montauk. well see now i get like that kind of like <laughs> if, I, if i now that i'm a little more jaded i'm like oh do they deserve get, to bomb yes like, you know avoid me will yeah, you yeah, Say yeah, no yeah. To me. have fun um but uh no i genuinely i really liked the, the show project. and i was like because i was you know they're like we want to be the goonies and i read the script and i was like this is totally like that and so i i thought it was really great and uh and then i got a call from like matt duffer and he was like we're at the atlanta airport and i was like okay and he was like uh you don't seem that excited that i'm calling you and i was like i just woke up like it was like a one o'clock in the afternoon i was like i don't know what's happening like how are you doing and he was like good like we want you to be uh mike on the show and i was like whoa and he was like yeah you don't seem too excited about it because i was very like playing it cool like whoa right. that's crazy hey, man how are you yeah hey how's it going but i was just so tired and he i just couldn't really believe it and he was i was like he was like yeah we're gonna start in atlanta soon so just wanted to let you know from me and ross we're really happy to start this with you and then we did it and it was like how amazing. long did it take to shoot six months or f- five months five months yeah, and where was it in atlanta in atlanta the whole still time. still in atlanta now is netflix even netflix at this point they had they orange had, is new black they had orange is new black and they had house of cards house so of it cards. was like getting big right but i mean you know we remembered 
just for the first week, you know, like there's, I remember you, if you went on Netflix at the time, you could see like a preview image of like Stranger Things in the log line and right. it said coming, you know, like when the release date, we're, like, we're on the website. Like, that's insane. We were all like freaking out that we were at the website. <laughs> Can like, you imagine? How adorable. Thinking we, back to four years we ago and going like, well, look, we're, yeah. they put a picture of our show well, up. Yeah. We were now all it's so. Like, we own the network. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we were all just like, this is great. And then we finished the first season where we the called. Other kids in the cast? They, so they, wh- what about them? Had they, like, didn't. Uh, Gaten. Had experience. Like, Gaten, he was a Gaten Broadway kid. was a Broadway kid. kid. And so was Caleb. And Caleb was a Broadway kid. And uh, Sadie, who they added on to season two, who plays Max, was also a Broadway kid. And they're all very, like, well. And, and, but also, like, really innocent, amazing kids. So was it, like, when you jumped on set? Because this is essentially mm-hmm. your first set no yeah well like yeah professional set yeah so like when you jump on set like was it all you're a film kid yeah but is it like uh hey man your stand-in's gonna do did you have to learn everything or did you like when you hit set um, where you're like i know what you are you do this and i do that. i remember specifically i said something to to uh uh nacy assistant camera and i i didn't you know he did sticks and that's really what you when you're a kid when you, someone goes a hey, mark and does that that's that's, that's what you think that's all it is yes and therefore their job that's also what you think it is they're just pressing sticks right so i was just like yeah i was and this just came from a complete sincerity i was talking to him and i was like i can't believe like all you do for your job is do sticks like that's amazing and all you do fuck is, you yeah, actor and, yeah, I know, for real. And, and I remember thinking the minute I said it I was like what an asshole thing I just said and then the dude the dude was like yep and I was like so did you go to film school for it and he was like nope and I was like cool and so He's like we got five more months yeah, of this Jesus kid. Christ yeah <laughs> just but um I was just really excited and I became friends with everyone and and yeah, they were really interested in like having me learn. So I'd stay after set and watch them shoot, and they'd sh- you know tell me what the difference was between different stuff and different lenses. And are you the only Canadian kid in the cast? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, was there any preferential or special treatment for you being the Canadian kid? No, everyone was the same. Really, everyone across the boards. Nobody oh, yeah. was like, "Well, fucking." He's Canadian. Finn so came from Canada. We, we got to be nice yeah, to him. Like, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like. Finn, this is a telephone. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you guys use there, but uh, I think the ones in your country have cords, yeah, cords on them, and they go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was it was a really special thing, and those all those kids just became my best friends because it's like, who else? You're all on this crazy thing together. It's everyone's first big thing, and you're like, all just basically linking arms the whole time, and it's still like that. I mean, like we're really the you guys because are bonded as well. A be- family exactly, at this like point. like we're we're the only people that have experienced it. So <laughs> you're like, a, a, you are honestly, and this is no exaggeration. You are bound together like a, a Stanley cup winning hockey team. No matter yeah. where you go in life, it's you'll like, have that ring We're Yeah. We've yeah. walked together and walked as champions and stuff. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. Um, and it continues to go mm-hmm. on and on. And something tells me that even if one day they're like, ah, fuck it, we're done. Right. For like two years t- or five years. Then, you know, we live in the culture where they're like, oh, my God, come back at age 30. Right. Let's do well, that's that's that. And also the other thing is like comic cons are giant. Yes. Comic cons are huge. And yeah. I remember Sean Astin told me was like, yeah, it's never really o- over. You guys, you kind of see each other every like year or a few years. At because Comic-Con. of that world. Like, and that's just like, he's like, well, it's also when you're on a set, it's such a small, even though there's like thousands, you know, bunch of movies and TV shows being made. Like, it's still such a small world right all right so you kind of you're like running when you're saying well because also when i'm that's also you know i'm not i don't want to be a dick but like when i'm on set and i see like an actor crying because it's over i'm always just like this isn't goodbye like we're literally seeing each other not only i mean we're probably going to see each other in the next six months. Like, yes. <laughs> I mean, and then we'll see each other on tour. Yeah, do we have press (laughs) in like three months? This ain't the last um but um it was really special and it still is really, really, really special. And I still love doing it. It's great. When, so when it, when did it ha- rehappen in, in regards to right, Stranger so, Things? Right after I finished Stranger Things, the first one. So it hadn't even aired yet? N- no. And they were like, oh, uh, so they have a new director for it. And, um, 
Uh, it's called Andy Muschietti. Muschietti. Is that did, uh, yeah, I guess Mu- Muschietti. Muschietti. Um, spaghetti. Yes, spaghetti. Um, um, and so at that point, who now who was it? Was it Warner Brothers going, we saw a kid that we liked? No, it was my agents going, oh, they're doing it again. You want to, uh, we'll get you another tape. And they didn't know anything about me. And so you just had to go in cold and do it all again. Over. Yeah, and I didn't tell any of the kids I was auditioning with that I did it again. I just was, I already knew the character so well. So I think I had a little bit of an advantage. An edge. Hell yeah. So I went in and, and did it, and like it was pretty immediate. And also immediate when uh, uh, I met this kid. Jack Dylan Grazer is the other kid, and he plays the kid with the inhaler, Eddie. Right. Who's like become one of my best friends. He's one of the funniest people I've ever met. And immediately we were talking about something. We were talking about a movie he did, and we were talking about some some old classic actor. And uh, he was also like a weird film buff and loves like weird seventies movies because of his dad. And <clears throat> why? Because of his dad? Because his dad's like a, fil- a f- filmmaker. His, his pre- I mean, his uh, his he's uncle's the one Brian Grazer. Like, yeah, yeah. His, he's his, good. His yeah, he's great. And his his uncle's Brian Grazer. Oh, is that right? Yeah, who's uh, you know, Ron Howard. Imagine guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of just knew that era. And I remember we were talking about some old actress or actor and I'll tell you who it was after, but he was like, I met so-and-so. I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. How was he? He was like, he was an asshole. And I remember hearing that and being like, this is the best kid. I've ever <laughs> He's met honest. And, uh, and so we went and, uh, did the audition together and it was like, everyone was just, it was one of those things. It's like, I, it was like, we struck gold. Like everyone just like immediately became best friends. Do you know how rare it is? It's ridiculous. In, in, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about in like this century that you got to do back to back projects where kids ride bikes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the, ride them. That doesn't even exist anymore, man. No. Like yeah. you watch any TV show or movie, you never see kids riding a bike and you went from one to, the to next. another. Was that like, like, do kids, you're a kid, or you were a kid yeah. a minute ago. Do kids even ride bikes anymore? Uh, yeah. I mean, did you have to learn are, to ride a bike for these shows? Kids, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, no, it's not, it's not like that. It's not like we don't, what's this? Yeah, Two how does wheels. this work? What, yeah, what do you yeah, mean? How do I call mo- this? Yep. Where's the app? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right. So, it, you, you wound up getting cast in it. Back again. Then Stranger Things airs. How, like a month into shooting it. And so it happens. So those so it then people must th- be like, "Oh my well, then God, like, we're so fucking lucky." Well, at, well, then they're like, "Whoa, this is crazy." Um, and I, the first time I ever got recognized was like we were walking in a sports bar in Toronto, and it was me and Jack Razor, the same kid. And this girl came up to me and she said, "It's oh, I I know you from somewhere." And I said, "Yeah, I'm. I was in the show. I just came out." And she was like, "Oh, it's my birthday. Can we take a picture?" And I was like, "Yeah, so happy." And then Jack looked at me and was like, "That was the first time wasn't it and i was like yeah i guess so he's like do you know how many more times this is gonna happen and i was like no and then from then on it was just like hey do that kid hey you're that kid and i was like whoa this is probably crazy a million times by now oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um wow how sweet that you remember the first though isn't that amazing that's good hold on to that hold, a lot of people uh, yeah. would, you know just be like oh it happens all the time and it will the kid was right but like that you remember the first one where were you in toronto I was uh, right by the Air Canada Stadium, like, Is, you know, where the Raptors play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like at the, uh, uh, with the, I don't know. Yeah, it's right. Uh, Is that right where there. you guys shot it? Yeah, in Toronto. At the All that, like, farmhouse shit or yeah. that small town? Was... That was, like, nowhere, like, you know, buttfuck nowhere. In, Is that right? In, in, uh, in Ontario. In Ontario. So, and then Jason took you to buttfuck nowhere. In, yeah, in Calgary. In Calgary. Right. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. And then they, and, and, and again, you got bikes in that thing too? No, 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 no. That's, this is a, this You're is like, a. You're like, look, bro. No, I'm out I of there. I ain't doing bikes yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm done I'm with done bikes. I'm done with typecast of bikes. Um, <laughs> it needs but, a uh, motor. Yeah, it needs a motor. Well, we do have a motor. I saw that. Good Lord. Yeah, that trailer motor. made it. Huge. Oh, it, I mean, that trailer hit. So the Ghostbusters trailer hit so hard in all the right places. Have you seen anything? All the, any of the footage? Yeah. No. Okay. But he he came over right before he went to shoot the teaser. And this is going back like Oh wow, yeah, so like front runner front runner days. So he goes uh he came over and did the sh- the show here and we were bullshitting. And right I think it was right before we went, before we talked before we went he on was my, about it. Yeah, he was just like I'm going up to shoot the trailer for this movie and and um 
I think you might enjoy it. It's Ghostbusters. And I was like, what? Ooh, and this yeah, was yeah. something that for years he was always like, you know. Hands he's, off. Yeah. He's yeah, built his own thing. fucking thing. And he's like no, yeah, Academy came, Award nominated. It came very, I think, natural. I, I think it He just came by it honestly. Number one, he didn't, he didn't do it first out. He didn't do it second out. He didn't do it for years. He's had a long, lustrous career. So for him to suddenly be like, now, I'm, I'm comfortable enough as a filmmaker yeah. to like handle this yeah. just because my dad did it like that makes it even sweeter now and stuff right. like that um the uh the sequences that we saw of like the trailer yes in True. the trailer of you guys in ecto yeah like is that Dr real Are driving? or do you yeah yeah, that's stuff in the. I'm a, well. I mean, I won't give too much. Away, I know I sound like a, such a. Yeah. Like, a no, no, no. I no. should know as a filmmaker. No, no, no. I'm like, of course well, we that's had, not real. We had a. So I did like a bunch of driving rehearsal because my character, I guess, drives it. Right. Uh, you know, a bunch, and uh, so. Uh, but and you then, don't even have your license. No, yet. but the minute I got on set, they're like, "You are not allowed to move your <laughs> foot onto the pedal, let alone do not touch it." Like you can act. Not, you you can't can act. Drive. Do not drive it. I mean, <laughs> um, and I was like, "Fair enough. This thing is." I mean, and also that thing, so what's amazing about it is they had two of those. Two Ectos? Two Ectos, and they were, they're these old Cadillacs, and I mean, they're like, there's like only a few left in the world, and so they just built them. For, I mean, they had shells that they just built from the ground up, and they, because, I mean, the scenes call for fast driving, like you saw in the trailer, yeah. like chases, we couldn't just like have the original engine in it, or else it would explode, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> right. So, uh, we, they figured out how to put a corvette engine into an ecto that reminds me of like in the comics ridiculous when I was a kid, the question he built a he put a took a porsche chassis and put a and put volkswagen it. shell on top yeah. of it yeah. um so it was supercharged super fast supercharged could go huge did they use russian arm and stuff like that oh yeah 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 so and, that is that car, car just driving and oh, no, a pod car. yeah no it's a for real driving like there's hardly any green i mean that's also what's amazing about jason is that you know jason said in interviews too it's like there's a lot of practical effects. Right. And a lot of the effects that you think would be CGI are not, which like I was very, I was so happy to be part of. And Jason and I became, you know, really good friends. He's such a good dude. He's so were you, I mean, to say like, were you familiar with the movie? But you must have. Oh, totally. Yeah. It was like a it's a totally, fan. it's a kid's movie, even though it came out when it came out. Totally. That movie works almost. And also, well, also Ivan's movie, Ivan Reitman's movie is his dad. I mean, like they're just time. I mean, yeah. Stripes is still so funny. Still works. And, oh my and, God. Look at you. Yeah. Tagging up on Stripes. Well done. And well also, dude, Meatballs is also. I love Meatballs. That classic. comes right from the heart of Canada. And made for Highest like, grossing. No money. Until Porky's. Was it, was made, it was made. It was made for like two two million dollars, and, and made, made like a bunch of insane. Money. Yeah, and uh, and uh, also little fun fact: my uh, uncle Hadley is in Meatballs as one of the kids. Which one? He puts uh, it. Well, he has two big moments in the movie. One, this kid has a frog. Yeah, and he says, uh, "I think he's just sleeping." And he goes, "Nah, that thing's dead." Yeah, that's my uncle. Are you kidding and me? And then he also puts a fish down the girl's bathing suit. Uh, in the in the swim scene. So he worked with Ivan Reitman. Yeah, and I told, and I remember the first time I met Ivan, I was like, "Hey, my my uncle did. Uh, he was one of the kids in in Meatballs." He was like, "Well, I probably wouldn't have remembered him, but that's great." And I was like, <laughs> "He was like, what scene was it?" And I was like, "Oh, he did the he did the frog thing." You know, I told him the same story, and he went, "Oh yeah, that kid was great. He delivered that perfectly." And I was like. Yeah, Look so at weird. that man. Um, a generation later, pa -pow! yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Um, what did uh, the here? Because I, I know, like, you can't talk about it, but no, no, no. Based on the trailer we saw, sure. I get the distinct impression that there's a whole lot of movie that they're not even talking about. Yeah, yet. no, there's. I mean, that's. I think that's the point too. Yeah, to make it. It's it's really a. Teaser, it's I a think. very surface level. I mean, there's a lot of there's a footage, but it's like there's footage, but it's like you know, right? You have not seen the big stuff yet. Um, how excited were you? To, and that now that wasn't you didn't have to go on tape for that. That was like we want him. No, I went on tape. For Are it. you Same shitting thing. me? Yeah. Well, well. So the thing is, is like I dressed up in the Ghostbusters in season yes. two of Stranger Things. I was. That's why we all thought it was just like they probably no, just called you. Well, no, because I did it, and I was like, okay, they're gonna hate me because I already did it and it's like why would they want to audition a kid who already like just you know repopularized right. well, i don't know the it's thing that they're the, sequelizing well, in my my mind made I was it like, hip again yeah, yeah, yeah they're like why would we call that kid 
Well, th- I had, you know, my agent. I'm, I'm sure on some level, they might. Finn, that image made somebody go, Maybe I gotta we ask should try I don't know. I gotta, I gotta ask him if that was, but I, I, I went as, you know, I did this tape and then he saw it and I just was like, well, I'll do best I can. And he was like, he really, really likes it. And I was like, great. And they're like, well, we're going to do a table read for it at Jason's house. Cause he, he does that a lot. And yeah. Even and Jason, for, for those that don't uh, live out yeah. here in, in Los Angeles, Jason's very uh, aside, known from the work he's made and the movies he's made, which are wonderful. Uh, Jason does these incredible readings, live, yeah. uh, live readings of scripts, he gets, where he just pulls together the most incredible talent in this he, town. I don't know where he read, goes. The arg, uh, the larg, I don't know where Largo, he goes, Largo or yeah. sometimes UCB. Yeah, I remember so he did it there once. He'll he'll correctly. get a bunch. You know, he'll get like Olivia Wilde. He'll get so many different people to read like Goodfellas and. Like mm. he'll table read them in front of an audience, and like, like I think Le- uh, what's her name? Lena uh, Dunham. No, the girl who was in. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said Lena. Um, yeah, she was. Uh, she played uh, uh, Kitty Pride, but she was in his movie uh, Juno. Juno. Oh, herself. of course. Yeah. Ellen. Oh, Ellen. Page. Ellen Page. Yeah. She, Wonderful. I think, did Return of the Jedi. Yeah. I think she was Luke for yeah, one of the yeah, readings. Yeah, yeah. Like she would, yeah, that's he perfect. does mix and matches like that. Sure. So he's he's he does he's way into that. Not just his, never no. his stuff. Always, it's more always famous different stuff. Plays. Yeah, he loves doing. I mean, he loves. He's one of those guys who just like loves game nights. Like he has these okay. famous game nights. You know, where random people. Show. It's like such a weird LA thing. Right. Because he's in a, such an he's an LA kid, and uh, he's grown up around a bunch of different huge people, and um, and got a good head and a good heart. Yeah, he's got an amazing heart. I mean, you could see through the movies he's made. Yes, just like very much. Very so. pure. There's, there, uh, he's a very pure, very pure person. And there are movies that ask questions and seek something. They're not yeah. just. They're not just. I want your money. They're no, yeah. About something a little bit deeper. But this one. This one is also one of those. I mean, like you could see like big things, but it's also like you know the movies about like a lot of it's about loss. You right, know? right. So who are the other kids? Who is the? I'm not. There's a girl so, who looks like girl, she could be related to Egon. Who's that? Right. So she, um, her, that's McKenna Grace, who's been in so many things. She's like one of those girls that's little girls who's just been in everything. And she's uh, so much, she's amazing. She's mm-hmm. like one of the most amazing little kids. She's so sensitive. And she's brilliant. And uh, she plays my little sister in that movie. And Carrie Coon, the great Carrie Coon, is an incredible, incredible actress, plays my mom. And there's a kid named Logan Kim who you'll know to f- to find out who he is because he's never done anything. He's, he's never. Ne- been- he's new you next you. Well, he's never been. He had never been on a set before. Like, so then he's new you next year. Right, but he'd also never done like a commercial. He had never done like a music video. He was like fresh out of completely clean. Did nothing Where'd like they find an him? acting. Like he was not an acting class, and it was like an open casting call because Jason really wanted a kid. You know, same thing, and he really wanted a pure kid that wasn't. Canadian kid? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, he's a te- Texas kid. Texas kid. Really? But still, kind. I mean, the same kind of like... Well, if you bring him up to Calgary, same bit. Right, right. Exactly. Prairie. The Prairie kid. The mm. Southern kid. So, uh, and that kid is just... So, I could not... He was the most mind-blowing. He walked on the set. He walked around just like... How I've old? I've done this... A, 12. He walked around... I've done this a thousand times, you know, just Even like, though he'd never done it once. Never done it once. Just the most, like, incredible... I mean, so otherworldly. How long did you guys spend there? I was three... Three and a half months in Calgary. I don't know if you've been in Calgary before. Many times. Yeah. I love... Um, the Rockies. I love Ed- Edmonton and Calgary. Oh, yeah. I go back and forth. We were actually going up there February, uh, this this month. For, for a show? Reboot tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Two shows in Calgary, two shows in Edmonton. The um, Did you work with Rudd? Yeah. How funny is he in real life? He's I met man. him years ago. He's such a nice guy. He's the ni- also one of those guys, like the purest, one of the purest dudes who still just loves... Com- he's we he loves having a good time and also just like loves comedy like that's he just is there to make people laugh like that's why he does it and like that dude just makes me and he's also one of my favorite i mean like wet hot american summer and like all those mm-hmm. movies they're just you know and he's, he's a legend ages. he's fucking dorian gray that guy as well that, yeah that dude old. never that well that's a and it's a meme but it's true the dude is like yeah Ages. Never. He kind of looks ageless. like he was in Clueless still, still and kind of look. still kind of twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At heart, you know, this business will do that. It'll keep you a young, lot of man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so wait, the, when I remember when I saw that trailer, I was so happy that he took it. You know, most of us know Ghostbusters from New York City and like sure. set, he took it out into the fields and yeah. the prairies in and, the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, it just it for some reason I found that very. 
appealing and what i get from the trailer i see how it all ties together and stuff like that but like taking it into a big open space and putting it mm-hmm. into any town usa is kind yeah. of smart and yeah. fun and and was for a lot of freedom yeah as well um all right let's talk about the turning what when oh, did yeah. this happen turning happened i think is post season two of stranger things and i got this um really cool and at this point you're now this you didn't audition this for. this was the first movie that, that i didn't they were audition like, we want for. You. yeah this was like the first movie in where i was like actually you know like there was no audition it was like that's really cool right, um right and uh and this amazing, this amazing, this director, Floria Sigismundi, who's like done, uh, she did like The Runaways. She did um, The Runaways. Yeah. That was the first R-rated movie I took my kid to go no see. No way. In Times Square when it was out. Um, oh, that was a lovely movie. She did a great job. Yeah. So, so she's, wait, she directed. So she directed this movie. And is it, it's based on uh, Turn of the Screw. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so, and so yeah, this old novella. And uh, so it was one of those things I went to weird dinner with or lunch with her and she showed me this lookbook of like what she wanted it to look like and she totally got it and so the first time you ever seen a lookbook before i'd seen lookbooks before but uh like sure is an amazing like lookbook that they did and they, they did a trailer the a fake trailer too, too. yeah oh, they one cut of those, themselves. like sizzle reels yeah, that yeah, put yeah. together based on other stuff uh yeah like footage from et and all this stuff right, but right. uh yeah she just was like yeah and we want to shoot in ireland and that's that's it and i was like they shot in ireland yeah we shot in ireland um, and what is it haunted house no what is kind that? kind of it's like it's it's very like on the line of is this you know Mackenzie davis this who's amazing plays our governess who's like kind of the babysitter and she was is that the lady she was in um uh, terminator yeah she was in terminator yeah, and, yeah. and she's the, like, Catch of, Fire and yeah, 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 all that yeah. stuff she's great and uh and she and was she also was in jason's in... movie what? this movie one called tully who's with uh charlie's theron and like yes that's yeah, right yeah yeah. yeah 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 but she's amazing mm-hmm. um and so she comes in and really weird things start happening to her in the house and you don't really know if it's happening to her you know if she's imagining it or if it's all like period or current it's cur- oh well it's set in the 90s it's like uh well they period. don't they also don't ever say that it's the 90s either it's just kind of like you know technically period yeah all right, right. uh but uh you know there's like there's a lot of great it's a great soundtrack they have like some great 90s music in it um, so wait, you got on season two or after season after two? After season so two. So when did you shoot this? Like last I sh- year? No, I sh- oh man, I shot this like two years ago now. Um, and yeah, we were in the middle of like nowhere in Ireland for like three months. And it w- and this little girl, this girl, not so little anymore, she's, she's nine now, who her name is Brooklyn Prince. Did you ever see The Florida Project? Yes. She's the little girl in that movie. She's amazing. She's incredible. And so she's in- She's my little sister in that movie. Um, now when I saw Florida project, which is, if you haven't seen it, like yeah, that it's was a must my favorite movie sure. that year. It's incredible. Um, oh, we got to talk about favorite movies this year too. Done and done. Later, yeah. Um, she, uh, uh, occurs as credibly natural. And then you read about the process of making that movie and he had a delicate hand is barely is no writing. It's more just recording kind what of, they yeah. said and then yeah. shaping a story around it. How did she do with here's a script? Well, that's a, so that was the first movie that she had yeah. where she like we had to sit her down and kind of and that's she adapted to it. So I, I don't know how a seven year old could have adapted to that better. Like she it took some getting used to for her for sure. But like, you know, she went from a summer just eating ice cream and running around and screaming to you're going to sit down in this period big house and you're going to be quiet and you have to play this character. You, she's not a lot like you, but this is like what acting is. And she right. kind of cognized it. Yeah. And, and just kind of slowly, you know, got it. And, uh, so that was amazing to look at. And, uh, I remember she told me she was, she's also one of those kids that has that drive. She right. was like, I want to, she's like, um, isn't eight twenty four the best one time? And I was like, yeah, they're kind of the best, man. Did, they did they did Tusk, they right? They did Tusk, yeah. I was like, yeah, man, they're kind of the best. They make the best stuff right now. And she was like, yeah, I have a... I, have a, I, I, I want to pitch them something. Uh, and I remember just being like, dude. You're you like, wanna... you're getting younger and yeah, younger Yeah, I was now. like, Jesus, you want to pitch something? <laughs> like, even me, I was like, whoa. Um, she told me this giant, elaborate idea. And it was the most insane thing. And I was just like, this is, yeah, this is pretty great. You were like, so I went and pitched it at Warner Brothers yeah, so and then set it, it up yeah, behind yeah, her yeah, back. Yeah, 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 <laughs> behind her back. And now she's got any no money for it. When uh, when, uh, when you work on an Amblin movie, yeah. do you eventually meet Mr. Amblin? Mr. Mr. Spielberg himself? Yeah. Um, 
funnily enough, I didn't, but he did a lot of notes on the script and, and, uh, he was, he was vital during it. During the process. Yeah. He, he, we got a bunch of Amblin people that came over for, to, to set, but he didn't ever make it out. Um, but I know he likes the movie a lot. And, uh, but, uh, I've, it's funnily, I've never met, actually I have met him. That's not true. When I was, uh, seven years old, I was in Larchmont Village in Los Angeles because my, uncle lived there right and he walked by with his um, granddaughters and i ran up behind him and it was like right after munich right and so he thought he was gonna die all the time and so um and i was running behind him and all i could hear was like so it's like when you hear running it's not you know it's the kinda... last thing you expect is a seven year old i'm a huge around... fan of munich yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> munich was huge for me <laughs> um but uh, no, he uh, he just looked down and I just looked at him and I ran back. Um, so there was no words exchanged, but technically I did see him. You did. And that was meet a face to face encounter. It's a face to face encounter, and uh, it's that's how I'll remember him is the scared face, of, you <laughs> the know, terror of of looking down yeah, and realizing. But uh, yeah, I mean that was it when was. That, when's that come out? January. I think. Yeah. Um, did I see you're going to Sundance as well? Were no, I had a. I, I yeah, I was in a. Uh, I was in a sh- like a short film that makes up like it's an anthology movie. Right. That uh, that I'm in with uh, I don't know if you know like Adam Pally. Yeah, of course um, I know Adam. Yeah, Pally. I, mean, I know his work. I don't. He's, but I know him a little bit. He's amazing. Yeah, he's and, very. Uh, so I did that with he's him. He's one of the stormtroopers, I believe. He is. And, he uh, punches Baby Yoda. And, he, Baby and I, Yoda, heard, yeah. I was watching he's it. He's the one that doesn't want to punch right, Baby right. Yoda first, but then resorts But then to resorts it. after biting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I saw, I remember going, oh, that sounds like, uh, that sounds familiar. It sounds yeah. like a, I was like, I know that's Jason Sudeikis, but that's right. a very familiar Who's that other voice. voice. And I go online, sure enough, I text Pally and I'm like, dude, how did you scan that gig? What like, did you say? Where do you get it? I, I have, he never answered me. I mean, he did answer me, but like, he was like, who know people things. Yeah. He's very like in the, in the, um, he knows everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's brilliant. And he, we did that together in Miami on like random weekend and it was really fun. Um, so I got that that's coming out. I don't know if it's like a wide real, I don't think there's a wide release yet. I mean, I think that's why it's going to Sundance. Right, right. They'll figure out what they're going to do after that. Um, Which is also what you did for Clerks, right? What's that? Yes, we went to Clerks. We're uh, into Sundance with Clerks. Did you also, did you have any other movies where you had to do that for distribution or was that kind of like it was like one done kind of because you had a deal after we that. went we went up with no distribution then the next time i went up let me see it was chasing amy already had distribution one time we went up with this movie red state and i was right. like i'm gonna auction it in the room and then i was like fuck you we bought it and unnecessarily who and uh pissed off a lot who of put it out we did we released ourselves that's when we started yeah red state red state is tour. very red state is very underrated um, and it has michael uh parks. Mike, Mike, well michael parks and also the kid in it uh oh michael angarama he is one of my favorite isn't he wonderful he's so a whole cast of kids man kyle was wonderful yeah. and and nick who blew up with uh succession nick oh Bones oh man yeah i haven't Cousin seen Greg succession yet succession, i heard it's amazing he's so fun in it but, but i he I, was in the i sat in front of uh on the way back from calgary because he did a uh, Michael did a uh, a cameo on another show called mm-hmm. The Teacher, which is shooting in FX or for FX, which was in. And I just turned around, and it was like five in the morning. It was so I didn't know if I, I looked, turned around. And I was like, "Whoa, mm-hmm. that's!" And I totally fangirled. I was like, "Holy sh- shit!" And we got up, and I didn't say anything to him right when we, you know, went kind of the slow taxi, and like it stops, and the seatbelt sign comes off, and I was like, "I'm a big fan, by the way." Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, thanks." That's got to be um, nice to hear too. Cool. And. Uh, he uh, yeah, he's also in one of the best kids films, Sky High. I don't know Sky if High, Sky so High is Nick Bronze in that as well. One of the best. As is, um, oh my god, Nick Bronze, dude, Nick, he's the best man. He's I, I couldn't. He in our movie, he he played uh, Billy Ray, and he was like, I remember him coming in and being like, um, I want to wear this thing. I don't know if you've ever. It's like long hair, but like. <laughs> it's all tied up but it's like as if i have rat. my head shaved and i'm like do you mean a rat, rat tail yeah, yeah, like, yeah yeah do you know what that tail. is i was like yeah that's very, perfect very. um he's lovely and also danielle panabaker was in that sure. movie as well and she's i work with her on flash all the time oh right i right, love right. sky high sky high is an amazing sky high is amazing play. and that's oh also God, that's a, right i took my kid to see sky high, yeah so you'd be right in the same that's movie. yeah the same yeah that's my my parents took me to see that movie but that you just did a voice in a kid's movie you did adam's family i did adam's family how long did it take that took a really, really long time. Really? It took, well, well because you kind of keep, when you're filming an animated movie, you kind of have to keep coming in. Because as they're animating it, they're kind of like, oh, that doesn't really go well with, and they kind of keep rewriting it. So you have to go in and do revisions. And 
Um, it was really fun, but like you know, it, it got it, it was like a you know a really long time. It was like six months, and that you keep coming back in. And I'm like, well, I was like. Man, that was a really hard session today. I'm so glad that's over. And then it's like three months later, they're like, you're coming back. And I'm like, yeah. is it the same thing? And they're like, yeah, we just got to polish it up. And I was like, well, that's how it goes. But uh, <laughs> but it was fun. It was so fun. And and uh, it was cool. I got did to- Did they have you find a voice? Or did you just do I kind of just did my own voice and figured out like, because that character is so chaotic as right. Pugsley is. So, so I just kind of had to scream for a while. And it was so fun. And I'm glad that they- That was also a movie I didn't have to audition for. They were like, hey- we want you. Yeah, and I was like, "Of course I'll do it." Um, so that was that was amazing. Um, and uh, wait, come to uh, you've never done a, an animated movie, have you? We did um, Clerks cartoon years ago right. on ABC. Jay did Jay and Silent Bob super groovy cartoon movie years. Oh ago. right, right, right. Cheap cartoon movie, but uh, that's no. Right now we're working on Masters of the Universe for Netflix. Wow, so, like as in. Like we're doing a, a reboot, uh, not even a reboot. It's actually technically not true. It is a sequel series. Essentially, picks up where the old stuff left. Like off. Masters of the Universe, like He Man, He Man, of He-Man. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which probably way. It's like power. literally ten yeah, years yeah. before your time. Yeah, is that live action or animated? It's animated. A- uh, animated, but they're talking about. There's a movie that they're putting together as well. Wasn't there a like going off of Clerks spin? Like, wasn't there a like a weird like a sitcom for there Clerks? There was a, a pilot. So they a made a Clerks uh, TV pilot back in 1995. I was. I don't know how that would work. I don't either. Well, now today'd be easy, but back then. Well, like, if you're on, well, you're because on you're on cable TV, TV you can't you say gonna... you can't say anything that you in your movie. You know, you can't yes. do the 36 bull job joke. It, it would have. Well, I think what they 30, reacted she's 30, to. It's 37. Exactly. Yeah. They. Uh, yeah. You, I don't know if you still can do that on TV, but they. Oh, I think what true. they reacted to is like, oh, it's a workplace comedy. Like it's people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Like it's like it's easy. Alice or sure, yeah. sure. So they were like, it should oh. be able to plug into here. How great is Alice doesn't live anymore? It's a, what? Doesn't live here anymore. What? That's one of my favorite films of all time. And I just found out the other day that it was a what? sitcom. Who's like my what? mom? What old soul did you swallow? Apparently, at my age mom's. Six? My mom was like, you, you should ate watch the old soul of some like some art critic. No, the, I love I love that movie. It's a wonderful movie. And uh, Martin Scorsese. I totally nobody ever talks. No about one it. ever talks about. They always if talk I about ever the mafia meet movies. him, if I ever meet him, I'm going to tell him that that's probably my favorite movie. Ellen me. Burstyn is amazing in it. She's amazing, and the kid's really funny in it. Um, and Jodie Foster's in it too, as a as a young and pa- and Polly Holiday, who played Flo in the series, is also Flo. No, no, that was Diane. What's no? It's one of them. Big Tayback, sure. I think, goes over because it was Diane Carroll who played. I forget. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yes, an amazing movie. My God. All right. Let's. So that's Finn's year, man. You sure. can go see him in. Uh, turning soon. Turning. Uh, Ghostbusters is what? The summer? Yeah, it's July, I think. Cause July. It's, right well, it's going to be massive. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, you could go. Uh, Stranger Things 4 is happening, but you haven't started shooting that no, yet. No, we start in. Uh... Yeah, we start the summer, I think. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Do you look forward to like, yay, let's see where it goes. Do you I have love any it. idea each time? That's the thing is that everyone's like in interviews they're like what can you tell us and i'm like Literally honestly nothing, nothing. Yeah. like because they write it as we shoot so you know the duffers will go back and, sh- and write it and keep going but uh yeah you could catch catch me on that and um and then when are you uh, we didn't talk about the band so you left right or you finished finished calpurnia, calpurnia and what is it called now uh there's the a, i have a band called the aubrey's the which aubrey's. is just yeah it's just really small and um we kind of wanted to go more independent route with it nice. um and just just kind of release music when we wanted and have you not, released anything yet not yet um there's stuff coming soon so watch out for that i guess but what uh did you did the are any members of calpurnia coming oh uh, yeah the drummer of calpurnia is is me and it's me and him we're like it's our uh it's our two-piece kind of but uh yeah it kind of really just a two-piece yeah it's just two of us doing everything so he's a drummer and you're yeah. a guitarist yeah and well we i also like on on the record i play like bass and we both play keys and a bunch of different stuff but um it's uh well, music is always going to be fun, but it got to a point where like we had to tour, right. which is impossible for me because I can't just like book a show because I have to do sometimes you're on a set for like four months. Yeah, and it's time. like I don't want to put you guys out for waiting around, so right. everyone should just do their own thing. Um, so that's why we've kind of done this independent, more independent thing of doing uh kind of self releasing and Smart. and with a bunch of different people and just releasing music when we want to. But uh, yeah, so there's a so a few things. I'm also, I'm directing my first thing soon too. The fuck what? I'm very excited. It's this. Um, I wrote this short film. It's like five pages, and uh, 
we're doing in Vancouver at this convenience store. Um, what? Yeah. A convenience store? I know. Kid, I know a thing or two. Two about convenience stores. Um, what, how awesome. Now, wait a second. This is something you've been talking about doing since you were eight. Yeah. And you're now on the cusp of 18 or 17. It yeah. only took you nine years to realize your dream. You're about to make your short film. Yeah. You had a bypass, a stopover, if so, you yeah, will, yeah, yeah, of becoming yeah. insanely internationally famous with <laughs> sure. a few things. But now you finally get to do the thing you wanted to do. Yeah. What? It's a five pager. It's a five pager. It's a short thing. And Who, are uh, you doing it for yourself? Are you funding it? Are you- uh, so yeah. So that was the thing is that like we realized I. So that was also going back to Jason Reitman is that we were talking about it and I was like he was telling me like you got to do a short first because you know or just a really low budget thing and and so I I would come up you know I I just kind of figured out on set I was like okay I need to come up with an idea and so I would go up to Jason and kind of pitch him ideas and he'd be like that's good but the first I remember the first thing I pitched to him was like the most insane like impossible thing to do as your first short film I was like like I want to do one uh that's it's a silent film and it's shot on like actually like I want to actually shot on like what they shot with Charlie Charlie Chaplin with and and he's like okay so you want to do a short with something that doesn't exist like a, dead technology, a, yeah, dead technology <laughs> that, like will take so much money to do right and he basically told me he was like do two characters in a room talking to each other and have that so kind of easy thing works well, yeah and then I kind of realized I was like well okay and so it's it's just about I if you want to read it and give notes, that of course you I would. Have if you it. have, if five, you have five pages, five pages. Is, if you got the time, that's a breeze, son. Yeah, five pages in a convenience store. Um, story of my life. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. the name of my biography. <laughs> five pages, a hundred pages in a convenience. Hundred pages. Store. In a Where did you figure out how to find a place? Did you were like, we I'm just scouted. Um, we went to like a bunch of different places in Vancouver. And so, well, who's financing it? So, so that's the thing. We were like, I wrote this thing thinking it was going to be no money, right? And then I realized fuck this is a lot more money than i thought it was going to be so and i had i'd crowdfunded a thing before i'd like co-directed a music video which is like were people I, cool about the crowdfunding oh thing? totally yeah yeah and well that's the thing i wouldn't have done it unless people didn't want and that's also the other thing is like i don't want to pressure anyone to because i th- i think a lot of people are like well you could just fund it yourself and but it's i could like, see in your case like your kid most people would be like oh my god like create you know it, it, he's he's not right. doing it to get rich he's doing it because he wants to make art and stuff right and but it's it will i don't also, think you know, it comes off untoward is what i'm saying yeah i think most people it was like, a very support that yeah it was a very like if you want to support it for sure if you mm-hmm. don't it's whatever but uh and i'm sure you gave it the like undersell like that well yeah if you want to support it great if well not, no well i mean it's one of those things where it's like you know not everyone has money it's like true. <laughs> so it's a weird th- it's a it's it's a, a it's tough to figure out because you've seen people do crowdsource funding campaigns where it's like you haven't done it successful. yet have you no, technically not. We got close with this thing we were doing called Hollyweed, but the company went Oh, under. was that a web series? It was a web series. Yeah, did that yeah. come out? It did not. We did one episode and then this company we did it with, Rivet we did it with Rivet TV. We kind of went under. But so that was like people would have paid for it if the show like came into being or stuff. So it sure. just wound up going away. But I, at one point, we almost did it for Red State. And then I'd seen an article online because I talked about it. I was like, oh, we're going to do this. And this is before Kickstarter existed. Sure. Before Indiegogo. We built a website for it, and then somebody like shamed me out of it. They're like, "Yo, Kevin Smith's gonna beg for money," and I was like, "Oh my god, is that how yeah, it works? yeah, no?" But that's me because I've been established. I've made a bunch of movies, but you being a kid, man, the that's first. like so easy. Yeah, and no. so an awesome way to do it. All I, right, so wait, where'd the money come from? The short uh, money was yeah, crowdfunding from a bunch of different people from the, the short you're about to do. Yeah, so you raised a budget for it. Yeah, Fuck so it we're out. doing it. So uh, when does it begin? Week it begins February, early February, and we're doing that. Hopefully. I mean, you know, I want to enter into festivals and stuff. And are you excited? Yeah, it's like all I've ever wanted to do. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, for the all of the last nine years. Yeah. Most people can like talk about waiting like oh, for fifty years. I've always yeah, wanted yeah, to. Yeah. You had nine years. I had That's nine. not bad, dude. That's aggregating. Yeah. Productivity on yeah. a regular basis. Well done. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's talk movies. Sure. What did you see this year that you liked? My favorite movie, uh, my favorite movie of the year is Uncut Gems. Yes, I just Safety watched Brothers. two weeks ago the Safdie Brothers. Safdie Brothers know how to make a movie that feels like you are in like being in the movie. By it. Yes, if yeah. they keep a dr- if one of their secret ingredients is a driving score that begins when the movie begins and doesn't end. It's, there's no breaks. If you've noticed, it's like it's a visceral. Yeah, there's no other movie where it's like you're in his head, having the experience with and you're reacting, and also you're just like. 
your just your hands are on your head the entire time. Do not do that. Yes. Do not whatever you're doing. Do not do that. He does it. It's 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 insane. And then um, at the same time, you start rooting for him, and then like yeah, you know. But it, then you're like, wait, he's gambling. Like, should I be rooting for him? And you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna gamble. I'm gonna. And then it has a very killer ending and stuff where you're just like, oh, oh people man. don't do this anymore. This is wonderful. Yeah, I love that. Well, movie. that's what I think. It's like they are like the new Scorsese. You know, Scorsese. Like, you know, no one or like Cassavetes. You know, like no one Did really you like makes. Good time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love good these time. cats are fantastic. Um, um, and it's doing killer business, too. I know. I was very happy. Movie, yeah. I was very, very happy for them. Ooh, someone's getting a call. Somebody trying to get in the house. So, um, all right, who? what's after that? Um, Jojo Rabbit was awesome. Of course, TD. Loves him, yeah. Um, that was great. And uh, there's a movie Jesse Eisenberg did mm-hmm. um, called The Art of Self-Defense. Yeah. You I see, see it all the time on uh, iTunes. I haven't picked it up yeah, yet. Yeah, you should. It's, it's him great. holding a dock shin. It's yeah. A, with a fight. yes, yes, it's yes. Good. It's so great. Yeah. Who did it? Do you know? Uh no, I don't remember. But worth watching. But very worth watching. It's definitely the most underrated movie that came out last who year. Who are the actors, actresses that it's, you like? Um, no, who oh, that you oh, like that, that I make love. You go like, oh, oh, uh, man. Well, just seeing Adam Sandler was incredible. Right. How a dude can do so many successful, crazy, big budget comedies and then just be like, okay, I'm gonna do a a bomb back film or mm-hmm. I'm going to do a Satchel Brothers film is so like so cool mm-hmm. and bold how you could just do you could slip <laughs> whoa he been doing just it slip out of it since PTA right since yeah uh, since Punch Drunk Love Punch Drunk Love with Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, so yeah he was great and uh, we uh, who else is there I mean obviously Michael uh, Angelino or is it Angelino Angarano Angarano yeah sorry um, I just love his stuff where do the young kids sit on like the like the Leos of the world. Oh yeah, well Leo's amazing, obviously. Leo. Right. Uh, and uh, dude, Brad Pitt and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's pretty wonderful. Those that perform those two, and also your freaking daughter was in it, man. She was. It was so, kind of sweet. I was so on a, cool. I, it was one. I was happy for her. She had a really good year. But I was on a plane like a month ago, two months ago, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was on the plane. I you know seen it. When sure. It was out. But I was sitting there like, well, we got a five hour flight. Fuck it. I'll watch Why not? It. And there's a very surreal sensation to watching a movie on a plane that your kid yeah, is, in. is in. Yeah. So, and then it's so like, weird. wait a second. It's like a Quentin movie. It was very, very cool. I, that, yeah, that must have been kind of mind blowing. It was. It was um, one of those. He was one of the filmmakers that like made me want to be a filmmaker. So to see her pop up in his flick was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. is it, you know, a, to see Reservoir Dog. I mean, I wish I could have seen My dad was telling me about how, like, he was like, he saw, like, Reservoir Dogs at Vancouver International Film Festival, and there's, like, two people in the theater. And he, he said it was the most mind blowing thing he'd ever seen. And I was like, you're so lucky. But, you know, now we have stuff like Uncut Gems that's out, and you can do. see it for the first time. That's a movie that, you know, those kind of movies affect you, like, physically. What um? What else did you see? What have you seen that makes you go, "Oh man, that makes that"? Like I would imagine the Safdie brothers even movies, makes you go, "Like I want to make a movie right now." Oh yeah. Well, also like, uh there's a well, there's a movie that I've been meaning to watch that you you've seen more times than any movie. What is it again? It's the you've seen it like four. I I've heard you talk about it in interviews before. It's like four. You've seen it like four hundred times or something like Avengers that. Avengers: Infinity War. Because <laughs> that's that's definitely yeah. one of them. No, um, it's let an me old see. My war... top five old movies were. Um, uh, um, do the right thing. Last temptation of Christ. Last, wait, oh no, 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 no! Keep going. Sorry. Man for all seasons. Uh, Jaws. I think it was JFK. man. I think yeah, I think it was man for all seasons. Man for all seasons is uh porn if you like dialogue. Sure. Uh, and if you like uh studied mannered performances because they're all like you know English turn of the century yeah. like King Henry and stuff like that. Oh yeah, but the That's dialogue the one. Yeah, this is, is the one. like just fantastic. It was written by Thomas Bolton. Paul Schofield, who played Thomas Moore, is amazing. But there's a performance in the movie by Robert Shaw, who played Quint and Jaws. Yeah, oh, man. And he died, you know, in yeah. the 70s, so we didn't get... He's in a bunch of stuff. He was a playwright as well, but, like, he didn't get as much out of him as, we, you know, you could have and stuff. But that performance in Jaws, of course, is indelible, and everyone loves it. His performance as Henry VIII, and he's only in Man for All Seasons for about tops 10 minutes is mind bending. Yeah. It's like watching a like a tour de force. Uh, like he he uh man, he was he was damn good. Whenever people ask me like who would you dream cast? Who would you cast in a movie? 
I'm like Robert, Robert Shaw, Shaw and my father because they yeah, come yeah. back from the grave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People are like that's Both morbid. Of them. Yeah, yeah. But still, what a weird cast it would yeah. be. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've been watching. I, I get the. F- I got the five films of uh, Cassavetes for Christmas. What on... it, now? What does a 17 year old make of Cassavetes in 20? He's like my favorite. Oh, he's, that he's, makes my heart he, sore. His his movies still. I think they still like his first movie. Um. Killing of a Chinese Bookie? Well, no, that that movie's great too, but the Minnie Moskowitz? No. Uh, uh was it Faces? Ah his first movie. Well done. Which was completely improvised, which was like unheard of at mm-hmm. the time. You know, there are a lot of you, you have a lot of filmmakers that do that now. And back then, uh, no. No and people would be like, you know, there people get really uncomfortable because like a, a lot of the dialogue was like cutting each other off and, and doing a bunch of stuff and like real how real people talk. And uh and, you know, it's a short watch. It's like an hour and 20 minutes or something mm-hmm. like that. And it just, it holds up still so, so, and such amazing political commentary. And this on, is a guy who was also doing mainstream film. Like he was also in, in Rosemary's, Rosemary's Baby. Baby. Yeah. Like and acting for such somebody a great, else. Yeah. And also just made really also weird movie. You know, he did that movie opening night, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, His also most mainstream movie hands down probably is Gloria. If Which I haven't seen, seen yet. It. it had Jenna Rollins and yeah, it was yeah. his wife, of course. Jenna Rollins. And um, it was very much like a, a, a urban mob movie. And as much as she was an old mobster's mall who winds, it's, it's you know, uh, it's a Mandalorian. It's Lone yeah, Wolf yeah, yeah. and Cup. She yeah, yeah, winds yeah. up in the yeah. care of a child mm-hmm. and, you know, it's her against the bad guys and stuff. And that, most of his stuff was like faces. Sure. And like everything else. More you know groundbreaking whereas gloria was like right. oh i recognize this and i love films like that but i've also i also love films that are like supreme i don't know like i love like harmony korean's films mm. and still mm. his films now like i love the beach bum all right did, did you, you like movie? the beach bum? i loved it yeah so you were the one that went the uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 the one I've, i was shocked that that movie had such a hard time because well, he was coming off of the, the spring breakers, spring breakers is, and matthew mcconaughey for i think sake. also because I, yeah i don't know what the whole maybe it's just the marketing of it and mm. maybe I that don't was a24 or was it neon? no it was neon, neon. and a and 24 didn't have anything to do with it so i don't know but neon does great stuff too but what um for a 17 year old what is a a24 is kind of the new miramax i would imagine right totally like they're well yeah all well that stuff. was also you know when you went to when you did clerks sundance they bought clerks mm. right they were they the a24 the of their day yeah no, it's totally. That's exactly it's what it funny is. that there's brand awareness that you like that you, the little girl from Florida Project, yeah, are like a twenty four. A twenty four is the best. Yeah, no, they have. Uh, I mean, they built a pretty strong brand, and they do that by putting out like incredible movie after incredible movie. Right, and you have also they have like they have such a good business model. I feel like too because they have some of these lower budget movies that are just like they have a deal with Directv. Yeah. So t- sometimes they'll just slide a movie onto DirecTV and you're yeah, like, where did this come well from? Look how well-versed you are. Yeah. That's... Well, you're like, wonder, where did this come from, you know? And uh, and so they, they're they just doing they are doing it big. Um, so I love, I'm like, an, I'm a big fanboy of them. Uh, what uh, What is uh, the movie you're most looking forward to this year? Oh, uh, that's coming out? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Did you I, see The Irishman? Oh, no, not yet. That's oh. the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah, put aside some time. <laughs> yeah, Go yeah. A few weeks and watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would have Did liked you to see, see Honey Boy. Screen. Yeah, what I really liked it. I here's what I love. I, number one, I thought like, wow, it's bold and brave, and that's like, uh, well, that's that was the therapy biggest thing. As filmmaking, I'm always for. But... And also, growing up as a child actor, you're like, it's it's a weird, it's a very niche, oh my god, yeah, that's right. I it's the most about. niche movie. Like it's and it's also just so specific. It's it's him. So yeah. like, if you're not. As you're watching it, you're like, that's even Stevens. Right. Well, that's exactly. This. That's this. Right. Um, what I also appreciated about it, aside from how studied and, and wonderful it was, 90 minutes. Such a, yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can make a movie. Because for... at a certain point, if you watched another half hour of that kid getting mistreated Be, by his dad, yeah. you'd be like, okay. Yeah, I get it. That's enough. But 90 minutes, I was like, oh, and he learned? Good. Yeah, We're yeah, yeah. On. Exactly. It it's a kind of a perfect in and out. But um, um, yeah. look at you, man, about to direct this year, about to do more acting this year, about to do more music, man. You're living the damn dream, kid. Yeah, I I just I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. You do enjoy it and you're it's, good at it. Too. There's a natural aptitude for it. Yeah. 
And then we actually we have to do something one day together. That's the that that's the we goal. Will. I'm making a high school thing next. I'm making uh, Mallrats uh, a sequel. Mallrats sequel. So maybe that's where. Oh yeah, I can last high is Clerks, Clerks Three kid. is happening now. That's also happening as well. So I'm gonna do Clerks Three and Mall and, and the movie's called Twilight of the Mallrats. Are they and that's are, are the uh, the Clerks Three have funding yet? Um, kind of. Yeah, I, in theory, after reboot, everything got way easier. People were like, oh, he's trustworthy. Right. And yeah. so <laughs> yeah. he's not crazy anymore. <laughs> so it yeah, it looks like there's there's a, a clear path for both of them. Is that I just I rewatched Clerks Two the other day and I was like, Man, I the, love the kid who I think it's it might be one of your best. I, I mean, I'm I'm with you. I, I believe it's me. so it's so good, man. It, it, it's and that's the, that a kid could dig it is weird to me because that's a middle age movie to me. It's a movie uh, about like you know hitting. Well, it's like a coming of age movie for a middle age person. I guess you're very. Oh yeah. my god, so well put. Well, well I just so smart. It's well, the, true. The, the coming well, the of age ki- movie for middle age person. I'm the, literally going to use that <laughs> for, for mall rats. That's my formula. Sweet, good. Okay, high five. We're it, high five, and you can't see it. Is the uh, the kid who played elias trevor Furman, amazing is he he's acting? a game developer he's of he's i i went he's zach moore he's got a huge part in clerks three I, okay he good comes out i got it. so sad when i saw his imdb and he didn't do anything else after. i was like man this dude is the funniest most like natural because you also rehearse your movies like plays like how could he have just come in and rehearse and he do found all that, that character and he found it by making every dialogue uh, every line of dialogue end with a question mark yeah, so yeah. he's so uncertain of himself that he always ends up here <laughs> yeah. um if you want to see like range too like he was in i stole him from jeff anderson jeff anderson put him in a movie called now you know and he could play he plays a completely different character than yeah. elias it's not even like oh he does the same yeah thing. um yeah but he was he didn't like he, he spent a little time doing it but he was like you know uh and I'm not into like beating right. down doors, and he's had a life to live. And and, like and Anderson's coming back. Jeff is coming back for Clerks Three, and he's kind of the catalyst of like. He is. It's, it's all about him. It's basically he has a heart attack in the opening scene, oh, and then man. he's just like I, I almost died last night, and I have nothing to show for my life. Like I, I didn't even get reminds married me of like some, you or have a kid. Reminds me of someone. Jeff said he goes, "Where'd you get that idea?" <laughs> yeah. I was like I don't know. So then Randall's just like, you know what? I'm gonna make a movie about my life, and, so, and it's. Clerks and what clerks. what got him back was the idea was the the concept kind of that and also like I talked about like um, I had seen Michelle Williams give like this speech when she won I guess it was a Golden Globe or an Emmy or something, something like Emmy that. where she was talking about like you know she was equally paid to her co star sure. which was Sam Rockwell and because of that it allowed her to focus on the work and because of that she just won an award so she's like look pay people equally. And uh, that was like, it wasn't a pay people equally thing about Clerks, but it was like we were going low budget. And he was just like, why do we always have to yeah. sacrifice to make the movie? Somebody makes millions and it's never us. Like, shouldn't we, that this was, is the yeah, third yeah, yeah. time we're doing it, shouldn't we get paid? And so that was the beginning of the end and kind of fell apart. So then I talked to him about it fairly recently and I was like, you're absolutely right. I watched your speech, man. I was like, I want you to come to set every day and feel like this is great. Like, I don't want you to come to set and feel like you're doing me a favor or set or that you've been dragged into this. I want you to be like, I'm comfortably paid. So now I'm just going to have the time of yeah. my life because then we'll get great work out of it. Mm-hmm. So he was like, let's do it. So yeah, I'm so happy to hear it, man. man. I'm uh, yeah. If you ever need a PA, <laughs> so, you know, who did that in real life was Eric Stoltz. Oh man. He used to PA for Cameron Crowe on his movies. He, Even though he's an actor, he would like, I'll just PA for you. Yeah. He's the man. He's, I did you ever see uh, is back to the future footage. No, have you? Yeah. So you look it up. Why, after they take this. you? I thought maybe they took you in an Amblin no, no, room. No, no, no. They're like, now that you're part of Amblin, no, you I can mean, see this. No, I mean, he got cast before uh, yeah, Michael oh, J. Totally. Fox. And Did they have that footage? Yeah, Amblin? there's like five minutes of footage online, and it's a side by side, and it's wildly more dark because of his delivery. And there's stuff. no comedy. There's no it. like out of a DeLorean. Yeah, and he's like, wait, you made out of DeLorean? Like yeah. it's fully, <laughs> it's serious. so serious, <laughs> and you're like, dude, this is dark, man. This is there was dark. a reason they made the decision as they did. Yeah, all right. Um, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. He has been working since he come out the womb ten minutes ago. Uh, you're going to be seeing him for the rest of your lives. Uh, so get very comfortable as you have been for the last few seasons of Stranger Things with him for the it pictures and whatnot. Get ready for his turning. Uh, get ready for more Ghostbusters, man, and uh, get ready for more Finn Wolfhard. The world is yours, man. Thanks, Vancouver. Vancouver, well represented, my friend. Very well represented. Thank you. Um, excellent talking to you, man. Yeah, thanks of for course. Making the time. Thanks for coming. Talk or to thanks you later, for having man. me. That is Smodcast this week. I'm Kevin Smith. Um, Finn Wolfhard. 
Have a week.